Welcome everybody. We're going to be doing a bit of an experiment this week, focusing on collage and creating artwork, but also thinking about how we display and hang art in ways that are not quite so overt and obvious. Now, I saw this idea um, using a coat hanger, but I think for simplicity's sake, I'm being outside in the garden, gathering up some sticks. I think we could use twigs twigs and string. You'll also need some scissors for this lesson and I am going to be giving the children some artworks um, by a French impressionist painter called Claude Monet. We've got lots of copies of these from um, some calendars that were really kindly donated by a parent so that was you, thank you very much. They're being put to good use. The children are going to be looking at the Monet artworks and they're going to be creating their own collage in response to something about the paintings that they find interesting, one little part of it that sparks an idea. They're going to be decorating the back of the collage, cutting it into strips and hanging it using simply string and twigs. Let's have a look and see how it turns out. The idea is to arrange, first of all, all your collage materials together. And the children here are using images, as I said, by French Impressionist artist Claude Monet. He lived in the 1800s and created beautiful paintings that showed nature like gardens, water lilies and landscapes. Monet's paintings were different from those who had gone before him because he used lots of colours and brush strokes in particular to capture the feeling of light and movement in place. Monet loved to paint outside, which is called plein air painting. He would set up his easel and canvas in front of the scene he wanted to paint, like a pond or bridge. He would then observe the colours and shapes very closely and try to recreate them on his canvas while still capturing the sense of movement, of light glimmering and shimmering. One of Monet's most famous series of paintings is called Water Lilies. And in these paintings, he focused on the lilies and the reflections in the water itself. He painted them in many different seasons and times of the day, so you see how the colours change with the light. The brush strokes he used were quick and loose. That's what gives his paintings a sense of movement and energy. That is what we're thinking about today in our mobile collages. The children are making collages assembled on a large plain sheet of paper. This is size A3. And they've begun by collecting together different parts of different money prints that appeal to them because of their colour, because of the content, um, but even not quite because of any reason at all, just because they looked at it and thought, that's interesting. Because collage involves cutting and sticking, you're going to need scissors and glue. And for the hanging part, you could use string and an ordinary clothes hanger that you might have in the wardrobe. That's perfectly okay. But I'd encourage you to try and use sustainable recyclable materials and that's where we plumped for the twigs found in the school garden. And of course you're going to need something to punch holes with or poke holes with. We've got a hole puncher here but with an adult supervision you could use a pencil with a sharp point and that's for threading through. On then to the really fun part, the assembling of the collages as year three are showing. You can have figurative forms, we've got ladies and dogs, um, but you can also be collaging and mixing in with more abstract stuff that you've perhaps created before. And you can see this pair are using oil pastels to make an abstract rubbing on the back. And what they're picking up in a very interesting way is um, the shapes of the cutout papers from the other side. Lovely complementary colours there. That's going to be a fantastic contrast when they're all hanging and dangling in the wind, as is this one. The summer heat that is emanating off this design is magnificent. 
when you've completed both sides, and that's really important, you need to decorate both sides, it's time to put your fine motor skills to the test. Make sure your twig is long enough, or your stick is long enough to accommodate all the little pieces of hung collage. And ideally, you might have somebody to help you with this because the threading through and tying can be a bit fiddly. Take your time though. And actually, you might find it quite mindfully relaxing. A very simple knot is sufficient. An important thing to remember is that you want to give enough of a drop for your bits of um, collage to hang and move with the wind. If you don't give enough of a hang, they're not really going to have that freedom to dangle and dingle and shake around. It is also really important that you bear in mind the order that you're assembling them on to the twig. This is all about just taking your time, slowing down, being mindful. Nice and tight tie there. And as you can see, when fully assembled and you move and shake them around, the picture will alternate showing both the fronts and the backs. Let's hear what some of our young artists had to say about their final artwork. I really liked um, making, finding the bits and bobs from Monet's paintings and cutting them out. And I really liked it, rubbing the oil pastels on the back to find like the shapes of all the collage. And I also really liked for some, for some reason the cutting the string was very satisfying as well. And I also like how um, the back of this, the oil pastel, it turns out as some sort of like abstract colour, but I can't really name it, brownish, greenish. Um, um, I really like doing these um, like spiral patterns at the back because of, because I like doing spiral patterns of different shapes. That's the square spiral and I think there was a triangle spiral. So the um, lady and the dog, so uh, these bits and, wait hang on, where's the dog? Uh, and the dog, wherever it is, it, it, it here and here. Um, uh, these, um, I just decided I wanted to cut them out because they just, it's just I kind of like that type of art and I like how the girl looks very real and the dog looks very like paint like you can see the different marks on the paint and i i like um how all of the pictures they actually kind of um match like the saint paul's cathedral like here and here it looks like the background and for some reason all the characters in the picture they all feel like they're on the boat with all the people on the, actually on the boat because they feel they feel like they're on the boat it just makes me feel like they're all together on one boat um, and on these gradients, I really, um, I really wanted, we really wanted to do gradient because gradient isn't just like getting solid colour down, it's like starting with a colour, ending with a different colour and yeah, then making so it mix relaxing. together. It's relaxing because you can see this middle part is like a mix between pink and orange. And that we also on the back, um, there's a picture. But yeah, um, there's a picture of a, a of a woman lady thing, and it's well, I really liked like I really like like drawing it because it um because it's like my favorite. I drew it in like my favorite way of drawing vintage. I aim to make it vintage. Um, even though this collage isn't that much structured, as when we put it together, it felt like it actually was planned. Like, um, this blue bit is actually a sky, but it's down here and it looks like um, a sea know. where the boat, here it is, boat <laughs> is. See, the, um, and the ladies, and the ladies on this boat, they remind me of like, well, in the book, Victorian era, when 
rich people would do, were worn like beautiful white silky clothes and um, I like the Victorian era so that just reminded me of that. We really enjoyed making it and you should try it at home. Yeah, it's really fun.